You're alone in a dark alleyway when you hear a lion's roar. Peeking out of the shadows, the king of the jungle stares at your face and runs directly towards you. You try sprinting to get away from him, but it looks like your legs and arms are moving through jello-like air. That's when you spot an old phone booth and manage to get inside it. But how do you even call anyone in one of these things? Where's your smartphone? The world of dreams is a crazy one, to say the least. It's a safe place to live out our deepest and darkest fears. But regardless of what common knowledge says, it's not where all things are possible. For example, you'll most likely never dream of your smartphone, and you'll have a pretty hard time trying to run. Why though? Scientists are still studying why humans dream, so there's a lot we don't know about the science of dreaming just yet. But there's a theory that helps to explain why we have a hard time dreaming of modern things, such as smartphones, computers, and even airplanes. It's called the Threat Simulation Hypothesis. Let's call it the TSH. This theory says that by living our deepest fears and anxieties through our dreams, we are practicing how we would react to them in real life. That's why so many people relive traumatic experiences in dream states. The brain is trying to condition us to survive threatening situations by practicing them out in a safe environment, aka the sleeping state. So, if you dream you're being chased in the woods by a bear or you're trying to finish that math exam without studying, this is your brain anticipating possible reactions by trying them out in a dream state first. It makes you sharp and aware in case these things do happen to you in real life. Should we thank our brains for this? I think so, yeah. But that's just one half of the story. Scientists also argue that since the dream state evolved as a defense mechanism, we tend to dream about situations that were dangerous to our ancestors. So, modern technologies such as computers and smartphones will rarely appear in people's dreams. Notice I said rarely? That means it's not universal. According to an analysis of 16,000 dream reports, smartphones do seem to appear in 3.55% of women's dreams, while computers appeared in only 1.2%. It's a very small number, but still, some people have the luxury or the haunt of dreaming about their cell phone. But why can't we run, though? I don't know about you, but I'm always trying and failing to run in my dreams. There are a couple of reasons why that might happen. Some dream experts suggest that it might be because, when we're sleeping, our brain is active, but our muscles are relaxed and lying still. Some conflicting signals may happen, which result in the running through water movement we feel in a dream state. Another theory says that when we're dreaming, we're engaging in a constant act of world building. Our brain is building the scenarios we're engaging with, processing all the information that's unfolding before us. If we started running, maybe the brain wouldn't be able to keep up with the world building. So our dream avatars are slowed down to a speed that is compatible with the brain's processing speed. You're flying above crystalline sea waters. The wind is brushing through your hair. You look around, and there's a pig-faced pelican smiling at you. It approaches you and starts to tickle your nose with its feathers. You laugh, but you can't feel a thing. What's up with that? Here's a fun fact, even lucid dreamers can't feel ticklish when they're dreaming. In case you don't know, lucid dreaming happens when a person is aware that they're dreaming and starts to constantly narrate the course of their dreams. It's where you get to be the scriptwriter and director of your own life. Scientists speculate that lucid dreaming is not a state of sleep, but rather a state of wakefulness where the person can establish a so-called two-way communication between dreaming and real life. Does this remind you a little bit of the movie Inception? If it does, that's because Christopher Nolan took inspiration from his experience with lucid dreaming in order to write this movie. Anyways, in a study published by a neuroscience journal, researchers worked with lucid dreamers to see if they could tickle themselves <laughs> or be tickled by other characters in their dreams. And they found something quite amazing. Dreamers couldn't feel the tickles. Researchers think this suggests that when we're dreaming, the part of the brain that reacts to stimuli is minimized. And let's face it, that's a good thing when you're dreaming you're stuck inside a house catching fire, right? Now let's say you just woke up from an agitated dream 
You spent the night dreaming you were at a rock concert where the band members were your childhood stuffed animals. You remember all the minor details of the dream, but you can't seem to remember any of the melodies the teddy bear band was singing. Why is that so? Most people don't, or can't, dream of music. But that seems so strange since music is a huge part of our daily lives. The only ones who do seem to dream and remember the soundtrack of their sleeping lives are musicians. To understand this a bit more, we have to look at another dream theory. In 1983, scientists came up with a neurobiological theory called reverse learning. This theory says that during our REM sleep cycles, the neocortex reviews our daily neural connections and decides what to do with them. That's when our short-term memory is tucked away in the long-term memory section of our brain. And it's also the moment when our brain cleans up. It dumps the unnecessary neural connections and tries to keep the important ones. In this theory, dreams are the result of this unlearning process. Say you've been dealing with some anxiety regarding your work. You suspect you might get fired and that's all you think about. Your brain makes up different make-believe scenarios playing out a series of interactions that end up never happening in real life. Some of these neural connections will be deleted from your brain database while you sleep. This is what might happen to music. The dreaming mind treats music as parasitic and non-essential, preventing it from ever making it to the long-term memory pile. If you think about it, our brain kind of protects us from having that cheesy melody stuck with us for eternity. Let's do a quick thought exercise. Consider that an average human being spends about two hours dreaming every night. That means by the time that you're 80 years old, you'll have dreamed the equivalent of 60,000 hours. That's 10 years worth of dreaming. Crazy, huh? Now imagine if our brains didn't erase a cheesy melody we listened to more times than we would have liked. I can't even begin to imagine the overload of information our brains would have been able to stock. Moving on, you know what else you can't do while you're dreaming? Experience things in real time. We just said we spend an average of two hours dreaming each night, but on average, we sleep around eight hours, and it does feel like we spent all those hours dreaming. According to recent research, a simple action that might take five minutes in waking life to be performed can take much longer in a dream. They tested this out with lucid dreamers, where scientists would ask them to perform a task and signal when they're done, while the researchers timed everything. Perhaps that's why we get the impression we dream for eight hours straight every night. Tell me one thing though, how many of you even remember your dreams? According to statistics, half of us remember at least one dream a week, and women are more likely to remember their dreams compared to men. Care to tell us about any recent dreams of yours? That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side.